Hey everybody, Captain Beanard back here with another Wi-Fi battle. Today we have week 5 of the BHDL3 Draft League Tournament, and that is going to be against Sneezy Wims, an individual who I don't believe we've ever played before. He is new to the BHDL um, and Draft League in general, so we're going to go ahead and um, get this match on its way here. And search... And we will see where he is. Still waiting for him. Still looking. So. Hmm. There we go. Okay, so it took a little bit longer, but we got him. Uh, IGN looks to be Eli. And so, yeah, uh, we'll take a look and see what he brought to battle this week. So, he's got the Flygon. He's got the Iron Treads. He's got the Doxbun. He's got the Tentacruel. He's got the Palafin. And he's got the um, Overquill. Alright, so um, I'm actually a little surprised to see the Overquill, honestly. I wasn't expecting him to bring that. Um, everything else, I kind of thought that there was a decent possibility he was going to bring. Um, we did have a game plan going in. Uh, no Shaman, that's a little bit of a surprise. Um, no, um, but that's a good surprise, I think. Um, we did have a little bit of a game plan going in, um, so yeah, our game plan was to lead with Rotom, so that's what we're going to do. I don't think, uh, anything we see here changes that math. Um, so yeah, we lead Rotom, um, and yeah, we lead Rotom, that's going to be the play, and, um, yeah, we will see how that works out. So, um, definitely an important game for us here. Um, this guy is an unknown player with a very strong looking team, so um, we're just going to hopefully do our best here and uh, see what happens, see if we can make it happen. Alright, so it looks like he is going to go ahead and lead with the Tentacruel as we lead with the Rotom. So, um, this is an interesting situation for us right out of the gate here because obviously um, the electric move is extremely obvious right now. He does have the electric immunity in the iron treads, so he could just straight up switch the iron treads here. Um, he could stay in and try to set some hazards up. Um, that's also possible. I feel like he could stay... You know what? I really don't know. I feel like it's possible that he stays in here, but at the same time I also feel like he doesn't want to take an electric attack. Now, this is very important because we are choice specs, so whatever we do, we're going to be locked into. So, um, I feel like he doesn't stay in here, so I feel like we go Hydro Pump and try to catch him on the Iron Tread switch. So, that's what we're going to do and hope for the best. So, he actually does stay in. We connect with the Hydro Pump, does some chip damage. So, that was an extremely ballsy play on his side. He goes for the Mirror Coat, actually. Holy crap, so that's bad news. So he gets some HP back with the Black Sludge, so that's why he stayed in. So he's got, um, we gotta make note of all this stuff here. He's got Mirror Coat on the Tentacruel with Black Sludge, and he does a ton of damage to our Rotom. So we take a ton of damage on Rotom there, which is really, really unfortunate. Um, we have to get out here now, because we're choice specs, obviously. Um, I feel like... What do we switch into here? I feel like Gudra, but at the same time, Mirror Coat's going to be a huge problem. Um, I also kind of feel like Arboliva. Hmm, 
Yeah, he definitely has a little bit on the back foot early with this one. Kind of feel like Scissor, too. You know what? Let's go into Scissor here. Let's switch to Scissor. Um, we're going to switch. Yeah, so the Mirror Coat, definitely a huge shock there, but that's, that's bad news. we got to be careful. So we switch into Scissor here and see what he wants to do. He goes for a knockoff predicting the switch, which is unfortunate. He does take some Rocky Helmet chip from that, which is nice, but then he gets rid of our Rocky Helmet, So, and he gets some Black Sludge recover, recovery. So that's uh, pretty bad news for us. So we do lose the Rocky Helmet with Scissor. Um, I feel like we knock off here. I think that's our play. Um, he could switch. There's a number of switches he has to this situation, but um, we could also go for a slow U-turn to try and get something else in here on him. Um, I kind of want to do that too, um, but you know what? Let's just knock off here. Let's go for the knock off, see what he does. He does switch, so that's not bad. He does have a number of resistances to this, but we will get rid of an item on something, which is nice. Um, he switches directly into the Overquill, so that thing's coming in. It gets the Intimidate to lower our attack, which isn't great. We go for the knockoff, does basically nothing to this thing, um, but it, we do get rid of the Black Sludge on this thing. So, um, <clears throat> so that's good. Um, so he's got no item on the Overquill now, which is nice. Um, I might have to look into Overquill here, because I really don't know what Overquill does. I haven't um, really seen much of Overquill. Um, at all, so I'm not 100% sure exactly um, what Overquill could do here. Um, I don't know if Overquill gets a fire move or not. I kind of want to just check to see if it does, because if it does, we might have to just hard switch. But it doesn't appear that Overquill gets... On a, on a quick scan, it doesn't appear that Overquill gets a fire move. Um, so I kind of just want to straight up switch here. Um, but I kind of want to U-turn just to pivot. So we're just going to U-turn and see what he wants to do. He does go for a crunch, which uh, does quite a bit of damage, actually, taking us below half. We go for the U-turn. Does a ton of damage with a critical hit, which is pretty incredible. And it does give us the pivot. So um, on the pivot, um, what do we want to come in with to face this thing? I feel like Mudsdale is definitely the best answer. So we definitely go Mudsdale here. Um, we have taken a lot of chip on the scissor and the Rotom already, which is really unfortunate. Um, but there's not much we can do about that. So now, um, I feel like he has, he definitely has switches here. Um, he probably does switch. Um, just want to make note of the fact that he has crunch, not that, you know, that's any great surprise. Um, I feel like we take this opportunity to just go for a stealth rock because I don't know. I mean, this thing does actually get water coverage, but I don't know if he would really go for it. The Flygon switch is kind of obvious. Um, so if he switches into Flygon, I kind of don't want him to get a free switch. Um, he does have water coverage, so that's important to note. Um, you know, the possibility that he could have water coverage. Um, but I kind of want to get Stealth Rock up here. Um, so let's just go Stealth Rock, see what he wants to do. Um, I feel like he doesn't stay in, so he does switch, so that's good for us. He probably maybe goes Flygon to try and catch the ground move. And he does go for the Dock Spun. Okay, so he goes Dock Spun. We go for the Stealth Rock, get that Entry Hazard up on him, which is good. Um, and now we're in a situation where, unfortunately, this Dock Spun could be a problem for us. Um, I was partially not expecting Dock Spun this week, but at the same time, I thought it looks kind of good into my team, so I did acknowledge that there was a possibility he could bring it. Um, I don't know that we really have a switch to this thing. I think Mudsdale's kind of our counter to this thing. Um, so as much as I don't know how much damage a high horsepower will do to this thing, um, I guess we could roar him out too. That's a possibility, but that risks the possibility of getting in with something even worse. So I guess we're just going to, you know what, let's just go for a high horsepower to scout damage here, see what he wants to do. Um, yeah, so he goes copycat. What the... So he goes for the Stealth Rock to get three Entry Hazard set up. So that's that's really unexpected. Okay, so he copycats our Stealth Rock. That is crazy. Okay, so he's got some crazy sets this week. Okay, we do have 50% with a high horsepower, which is incredible. Um, and then he gets some HP back with the leftovers. So that Dock Spun has copycat of all things. So these sets are really unique and, and kind of working out for him, actually, if I'm being honest. So... Um, he knows, I think it's going to be really close as to whether or not he takes another high horsepower from that HP, so he probably doesn't switch. Now he probably goes to the Flygon, if I had to guess. Um, so, I feel like... 
What do we do here? We can't go close combat because that clearly won't be enough to take the Dock Spun out. Um, we could roar him out. I kind of want to roar him out. I don't want to go high horsepower because he gets a free switch to the Flygon if we do. Um, let's roar him out. Let's do that. Let's see what he wants to do. He does switch. Okay, so what does he switch in with is the question. Probably the Flygon. What's that going to be? That is going to be... Okay, it's the Flygon. So he does switch to the Flygon. He takes some Stealth Rock Chip. Um, we go for the Roar, so we're going to phase him out here um, with the Roar on the Flygon, and he's going to get forced into another Pokemon at random. What's it going to be? It is going to be the Iron Treads. So there's the Iron Treads. Um, he takes a little bit of Stealth Rock Chip from that, and uh, no Air Balloon, so that's good to know. So... Um, so, okay, so the Iron Treads is in, so I feel like he could easily stay in here, but he could also easily switch. So, what I'm thinking is that we actually try to catch him with a close combat this time. So, we're going to go close combat and see what he wants to do here. If he stays in, it would do massive damage. He actually goes Rapid Spin, so he does stay in, um, inflicts a little bit of chip damage, he gets the speed boost. Uh, it also increases our defense via our stamina ability. Um, gets rid of the Stealth Rock, which is unfortunate. We go for the Close Combat in return. It does massive damage to this thing, although not enough to take it out, unfortunately. Um, and then um, we do take some Rocky Helmet Chip, too, as we also regain some HP with the Leftovers. So um, we have to make a couple of notes here. So the Iron Treads is Rapid Spin... And he also has a uh, Rocky, uh, Rocky Helmet. <clears throat> so now we have a choice to make on our hands, um, just because obviously he could switch. Uh, we're, our defense, our physical defense is back to neutral now, thanks to the stamina ability. So I feel like um, we stay in here and we go high horsepower. I think that's the play. Um, yeah, or we could Stealth Rock again, actually. That could be a decent play, but we can't really do that with the Iron Treads in play. So let's go High Horsepower again, see what he wants to do. He does switch, so what does he switch into here? Predicting the Close Combat, maybe. Okay, unfortunately, he doesn't predict the Close Combat. He switches into the Flygon, so we should have gone Close Combat there. So he gets us with the Prediction. That sucks. Um, not going to touch him thanks to Levitate. Um, we are going to get some HP back with the Leftovers, which is nice. Um, we should have done something different there. That was uh, too big of a risk, I think. So um, now the question is, how do we handle this thing? So we are still at neutral defense. We don't really know anything about this Flygon set. Um, I kind of want to stay in to get more information. And he could be Dragon Dance. That's obviously possible as well. Um, but I kind of want to phase him out again with Roar in case he decides. I feel like he won't do that, though, because he knows we have Roar. Um, this is kind of a tough decision, honestly. We could switch into Rotom, um, since Rotom can't really take any more damage um, to Scout, but I kind of don't want to do that either. Um, he could try to set... You know what? Let's go Roar just in case. Let's make the safe play and go Roar. We could try to bait the Terra. He goes Draco Meteor. He actually misses the Draco Meteor, which is really unfortunate for him. Um, we go for the Roar, because that would have done massive damage, if not take us out, perhaps. But um, we know that the Flygon is Draco now. So we phase him back out into the um, into the Hisuian Quillfish, or the Overquill, I should say. He gets the Intimidate to cut our attack, which is unfortunate. And then we get some HP back with the Leftovers. So at this point, um, I feel like... We have to try and... I don't know. So we know he has Draco Meteor on the Flygon. That's important information. Um, I feel like he he could stay in here, but we don't want to make that high horsepower gamble again. So let's Stealth Rock. Let's try to get the rocks back up. So he does switch. He probably goes back to the Flygon here. Um, what's he going to do? No, he, no, this time he goes into the uh, Palafin, interestingly enough. So he goes Palafin. We go for the Stealth Rock, get the Entry Hazard back up, which is something... Um, Unfortunately, he does get a free switch into Palafin here. Um, we do get the rest of our HP back with the leftovers, which is good. Um, but now I think we're in a situation where we definitely have to switch out here. And I think our play is going to be... Because he definitely doesn't stay in with the Palafin. There's no way he stays in with the Palafin here. Um, even if he does, a minus one attack won't do much. So 
as much as I really kind of want to... I think Arboliva is the switch here. So yeah, we go Arboliva against this thing. That's our switch. So he actually stays in. He might be going for the flip turn here, possibly. Um, so we go ahead and switch into the Arboliva. And we take Stealth Rock damage, which is unfortunate. Um, he go does go for the flip turn, so that does virtually nothing to us. Um, it does activate our Seed Sower, which is going to be important. That's going to get the grassy terrain up on the battlefield for five turns, and that does give him the pivot. So we do know that this Palafin is um, flip turn. So certainly could be a choice banned um, Palafin. Um, but yeah, so we see that. Um, and now he's going to go ahead and switch in with the Flygon once again. So that's in things in. It takes a little more Stealth Rock damage. We are going to get some HP back now from the Grassy Terrain. So the question is, at this point, um, is could this be a Choice Specs Flygon? This has to be a special Flygon, it looks like, because um, he went for Draco Meteor. Now, the question is, do we want to... Um, what do we want to do? Do we want to try to get screens up here, or do we and try to take an attack from this thing? Because <sighs> any switch we go for is going to be pretty risky one way or the other. Uh, but I feel like we don't know enough about this Flygon set. Um, the way he's playing it, it feels like it might be choice. I kind of want to get some screens up here. Um, but... Mm. I feel like we might have to make a sack play here and switch into something just to get more information on this Flygon. Um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and switch into Rotom. Just we're going to straight up switch into Rotom here because I have a feeling he might tarot or something bad might be coming our way. So we're going to go ahead and switch into the Rotom. This might end up being a sack play, but I kind of want to see what he does. Um, we go ahead and get the Stealth Rock damage. He is going to go ahead and Terra this turn. So. What Terra type is the Flygon going to be? It is going to be Poison. So he's Terra Poison on the Flygon. Okay, so that's interesting. Terra Poison on the Flygon. Um, he goes for the Fire Blast. It does connect. It's not quite enough to take the Rotom out, unfortunately. So we know he has Fire Blast. So that's good to note on the Flygon. So he could very well be Choice. So, um, unfortunately, I am not, I'm really not willing to gamble on him being choice, although I kind of want to, I'm not willing to gamble on him being whether or not he's choice just yet. Um, so I think, again, Rotom might just be sacked here, um, but I think we, what do we do here? I don't know. What do we do? Does he stay in? If he's not choice, he stays in and take us out. We could Volt Switch. We could Hydro Pump. Let's click Hydro Pump and see what happens here. So he does U-turn, so he's not choice. So that's good information. So U-turns takes the Rotom out and knocks us down to five. So, so it is unfortunate that we lost the Rotom here. The only good news about this is he killed us on the pivot, which means that he's going to have to show first. And we know that this thing is not choice. So I don't really know what set this... this um, this Flygon could be, but we know it's Terra Poison, we know it's not Choice, um, and so he's going to go ahead and switch in now with the Tentacruel. So that thing's coming in, it takes some Stealth Rock damage, and then he does get some HP back from the Grassy Terrain and the Black Sludge, which is bad news. So we know this Tentacruel has Knock Off and Mirror Coat, we don't know anything else about it. Um, I kind of want to go into... We know he has knockoff and mirror coat, so I'm very hesitant to go into. Um, I'm very hesitant on what to go into here. He did switch out, I believe, against the Mudsdale, if I'm not mistaken. He switched out against the Scissor, uh, but Scissor's pretty chipped. So if he has a strong water stab, it probably takes us out. He probably outspeeds and takes us out. Um, I kind of want to go into Gudra, but that mirror coat is just scary as hell. Um, let's go into, what do we go into? Oh man, this is a tough call. Let's do Arboliva. So I want to go into Arboliva here because I want to, um, scout this thing a little more. Um, but I also want to potentially get some screens up. So, 
how many more turns of the grass do we have? Is, okay, we've got two more turns of grassy terrain, so we've got to be very mindful of that. Um, I feel like... We either... We want to set one screen up here, but I don't know which one we want to set up. Do we want to set up light screen or reflect? I feel like we set up light screen, because he hits on the special side. So let's go for a light screen and see what he does here. So he does go for a sludge wave. He's got that. Can we take it? Yes, yeah, so a 35 HP. We barely take it. Uh, we go for the light screen, so we get that special defense increase for all of our Pokemon for several turns. As... Um, He's going to get a bunch of HP back. Um, we are also going to get HP back here with the uh, grassy terrain. So we know he has Sludge Wave on the Tentacruel. So we know he has Mirror Coat, Knock Off, Sludge Wave. Those are his three moves. So right now we know that he has to... We have one more turn of grassy terrain left right now. This is going to be a really critical turn for us. And the reason is because... What I really want to do right now is I want to switch into Sneasler, and I want to try to go for Sneasler here. However, I am very concerned. Um, I'm very concerned um, about what he could potentially do. If he goes for the Water Stab, that's going to be really bad. But you know what? You know what? I feel like we have to do it. I feel like now is our time for Sneasler. Because we have the light screen up, we're going to get a physical defense boost from the Grassy Seed. I think we have to do it. Let's go Sneasler. Okay, it's going to be now for Sneasler. We're going to try to get Sneasler to work right now. So we're going to switch into Sneasler right now. Hopefully he goes for either the Poison Stab or the Knock Off. We take the Stealth Rock damage, which doesn't matter. Um, we go ahead and pop our Grassy Seed, and we get that physical defense increase. What does he go for? He does go for the knockoff, so that is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. So that knockoff does nothing. That was a critical hit, too. That does nothing. Um, we both get some HP back with the grassy terrain. Um, he gets black sludge recovery as well. Um, and now um, we have no reason at this point. Um, Sneasler is in. We have to Swords Dance. Um, this is why we brought it in. There's no thought process. We have to Swords Dance here, so that's what we're going to do. Um, his last move probably does hit us hard, but with the uh, Reflect Up or the Light Screen Up, I could feel like we could take a special attack. But he actually goes for the switch here, and he's going to switch directly into the Flygon. So Flygon's in, it takes some Stealth Rock damage. Uh, we go for the Swords Dance, so we get the plus two with Sneasler, which is incredible. So we have that sharp uh, attack increase, and now um, the best possible thing we can hit him with because he's Terra Poison is going to be a plus two acrobatics, so we're just going to go straight for that. No thought process. We outspeed acrobatics incoming. It is enough to go ahead and knock out the Flygon, knocking him down to five Pokemon. That is incredible for us. Absolutely incredible for us. And Sneasler is now in the driver's seat, ladies and gentlemen. So the Flygon goes down. He goes down to five Pokemon. That's incredible. So now he's going to go ahead and switch in with the Iron Treads, interestingly enough. So that thing comes in, it takes some Stealth Rock damage. Now, I'm not 100% sure what he's planning to do with this thing, um, but I feel like we just Throat Chop here because we don't want to drop our defenses off the close combat. Uh, at plus two, Throat Chop, I think, definitely KOs from this range. Um, so we go Throat Chop for sure here. Um, see what he does. He, we outspeed, we go Throat Chop. It does indeed from that range take the um, iron treads out we do take a little bit of rocky helmet chip but that's not a problem um, that take takes care of the iron treads knocks him down to four pokemon which is absolutely incredible for us so sneasler is in the driver's seat it's as set up as it possibly can be now he comes in with the palafin though so palafin is in he takes some stealth rock damage zero to hero obviously is here so now the question becomes um, I know for a fact, even if he's choice banned, I know for a fact we should, I think, be able to take a jet punch from this thing. Um, even if he's max attack choice banned, we should, I believe, take a jet punch thanks to the defense boost from the grassy seed. So we're just going to go ahead and click close combat and see what happens here. He does go jet punch. Can we take it? We have max HP investment plus one defense, so we do take it. Go for the close combat at return. It definitely takes care of the... Palafin from that range, which is incredible for us. The Palafin goes down, and he goes down to three Pokemon. So Sneasler absolutely putting in the work right now, which is incredible for us. Absolutely incredible for us. Um, so yeah, the Palafin is 
out. Um, that is amazing. Um, and Sneasler is in the driver's seat as now he goes ahead and comes in with the Dock Spun. So that thing comes in, it takes some Stealth Rock damage. I don't think there's any way from the health it's at, it takes a plus two Acrobatics, but we're just going to click it, no reason not to. Um, we outspeed, obviously. Acrobatics incoming does finish the Dock Spun off from that range and knock him down to just two Pokemon. So Sneasler is poised for greatness here um, for the first time all season. Um, as now he comes in with the Overquill, takes the Stealth Rock damage. He does get the Intimidate to cut our attack back down to only plus one. Um, but even at plus one, there's no way. I think the Acrobatics will definitely KO from this range, so we definitely go for it. Um, I don't think there's any reason not to, so that's what we're going to do. We don't want to drop our defenses further. Um, so we go for the Acrobatics. It is enough to go ahead and take care of the Overquill as well, knocking him down to just one Pokemon. So the light screen is going to be over now, but that's okay. Um, we didn't end up actually needing it as his final Pokemon is going to be the Tentacruel. So he comes in with that, takes the Stealth Rock damage. Now, I don't think, um, unfortunately, um, I don't know that a plus one Acrobatics takes him out. Uh, but we have no reason not to just go for it, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We know we outspeed Acrobatics incoming. It is enough with a critical hit, actually. I don't know if that mattered or not, depending on his spread, but we get the crit, take out the Tentacruel, and that is game. So we are going to win that one 5-0 versus Eli, but that was a crazy match, um, highly competitive, very back and forth. Um, but Sneasler, with a little bit of luck on our side in this one, Sneasler absolutely runs wild and actually, I believe, KOs all six of the opposing Pokemon like never before. Sneasler pops off for the first time week five here, thanks to an assist from the Arbolova. Um, pops off in week five here, and we get a huge victory. Um, but crazy game, very competitive game. Um, very happy to get the victory there. Um, and yeah, with that, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but with that, the Philadelphia Pidgeys will now advance to a 5-0 and record here in the BHDL3. I am over the moon about that. That is incredible. I am really, really excited about that. But um, as usual, I'm going to reserve my full thoughts on the match uh, for the weekly recap and preview video. So um, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching again, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy, and stay tuned for more new battles in the future. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.